Hello, my name is Taylor Erfling. I'm a fourth semester nursing student at Lincoln University. Today is September 26th and the time is 9.40 in the morning. Today I'm going to be showing you how to insert a nasogastric tube, administer two medications through it, and then how to remove it as well. Alright, so before we get started, I have come in, I have assessed my patient, I have determined the need for an NG tube, the order is placed. I've explained everything to the client, and I have also assessed um, the patency of both NARES, which one would be better. I have also asked the patient, whose name is Fred, um, about any history of nasal surgery, um, any fractures or deviated septums, and if he has had an NG2 place before, which NARES they used that was more successful. All right, so. I have identified the client with two identifiers. I've introduced myself. I have provided privacy and gathered all of my supplies. And I'm going to go ahead, perform hand hygiene and don some clean gloves. to get the NG tubing out and open. Flex it a little bit just so it's not quite so stiff. <coughs> and I'm going to measure um, the length of the tubing. So from the patient's tip of the patient's nose to their ear, and then from the ear down to the xiphoid process. Okay, now that I've got that, I have prepared my tape in advance just so I don't have to struggle with it. And I'm going to use tape to mark the tubing so that I remember how far it should be inserted, which is at uh, 48. Okay, next. I am going to lubricate about four inches of this. All right. Fred understands the need for the NG tube placement and I have placed him in high Fowler's position. Okay, I've got about first four inches of this lubricated. I'm going to instruct the patient to sit up, give me a thumbs up if he needs me to stop at any time. There we go. And I've got my cup of water prepared as well. All right, so Fred, tilt your head back. I'm going to begin inserting. Once I reach the, his neck is hyperextended now. Once I reach the oropharynx, I'm going to instruct him to tilt his head forward and start taking small sips of water. I'm going to advance the tube two to four inches with every sip of water, rotating it as I insert until we get to that marker. There we go. I'm going to use another piece of tape to temporarily secure it while I check for placement. You can check for placement in a few different ways. Um, the first way is to insert a syringe and aspirate contents about, you know, 10, 20 mLs. I'm going to clamp that so that an excessive amount of air doesn't get in there. And I have a pH strip right here ready for me. So I'm going to put the contents onto the pH strip and compare it. Um, for proper placement, the pH should be between about two and three. If it's higher than that, around six or so, that indicates it was placed in the lungs, not the stomach, and you would need to remove it and try again. 
The second way to check for placement is to get about 10 to 30 mLs of air and insert it into the tubing while you listen to the abdomen for a whooshing sound. Okay. All right, I hear the whooshing sound, which means that it is properly placed. A final way to check for placement is to have an x-ray ordered. That is the most definitive way. Now that I know it's properly placed, I'm gonna take a piece of tape that I've split almost entirely in half, so it's like pants legs, and I'm going to secure the tubing. Okay. I'm gonna make sure you don't use too much tape, but that you also are not letting the tube rest directly on the patient's skin so that skin breakdown doesn't occur. I'm gonna make sure it's comfortable for the patient. And then I'm also going to secure it to the patient's gown, um, you know, using a safety pin and a piece of tape, just like that, so that they do have enough um, range of motion to turn their head and such like that. Okay. Um, if we did have a clamp, it would be clamped off at this time to prevent excessive air from flowing in. All right. Now that I've placed the tube, I'm going to go ahead and administer two medications. Um, now, after I have placed the NG tube, I have documented all relevant data, how the patient tolerated the procedure, um, the gastric contents that were aspirated, the pH, and um, the level at which um, the NG tube was inserted to, so that any nurse can check later and see if the tube is possibly slipped out of place. All right, now for medication administration, I'm gonna demonstrate how to administer two different medications. Um, I do have them prepared already, so you have to ensure that the medications are able to be crushed and dissolved. You dissolve them in about 20 mils of sterile water, and you wanna do all of your medication checks and verify that it's the proper medication before you enter the room with them. So, I'm going to walk in, I'm going to assess the client again, I'm going to explain to him the need for the medication, why he's receiving them, um, and I'm going to identify the patient with two identifiers again, introduce myself, provide privacy, um, to, uh, perform hand hygiene and apply new clean gloves. Uh, before administering medication, you um, do want to make sure that you're checking placement so that you don't administer medications um, into the lungs, for example. So we're going to check placement again. This time I'm just going to um, do another um, air bolus about 20 mLs. All right, and I do hear that whooshing sound again, so the NG tube is still properly placed. <coughs> okay, before administering the medication, I'm gonna go ahead and flush the tube with about, you know, 10 to 20 mLs of sterile water which I've prepared ahead of time just to help the process go easier. I'm gonna remove the cap preventing air from coming in. And I'm gonna flush. Okay, now that I've done that flush, I'm gonna pull the stopper out and this is just to um, help streamline the process, make it go by a little better. So I'm gonna take the first medication, put it in here, and just let it flow in through gravity. Now if it's going too slowly, you can raise it higher and kinda help gravity work a little better. Okay. 
after that one's going in, you go ahead and flush again. You always do about, you know, 10 to 30 mLs of uh, water in between each medication just to make sure they're not uh, mixing before they get to the stomach. second medication. And then after this medication, you also want to flush the tube again with 10 to 30 mLs of water just to make sure that medication isn't getting stuck in the tube, that it's all going down. And so far, Fred is tolerating this well. He's not in any distress. Um, he's doing pretty well. Okay, now that that's all gone through, I'm gonna remove the syringe and I'm going to clamp it again. Make sure that it's still positioned in a way that is comfortable for the patient. Okay. And now finally for um, I am going to document the time of the medication, how it was administered, um, and the amount of fluid that I administered with the medication for intake and output assessment. After all of that, I'm going to show you how to remove the NG tube. I'm going to say this is, you know, a few days later, the patient is doing a lot better. Um, you know, no longer vomiting. We've tested. Um, we've tested the NG tube, um, if he's ready for it to be removed by clamping it off for a period of time and he still has no nausea or vomiting. It's been about 30 minutes since his last feeding. Um, and we've also assessed bowel sounds and lung sounds and they are present and normal. So I'm going to perform hand hygiene again and don some clean gloves. I've got all my supplies gathered, I have a towel here to catch any of the acidic contents that may be coming out. I'd say I've already assessed his bowel sounds and everything. So I've let Fred know what's going on, that we're removing it, um, how he can help. Um, he is positioned in high Fowler's position. And all right, before removing it, I am going to insert about 10 mLs of fluid. Now you can also insert air as well. This is just to make sure that the tube is clear. There's no more, no medication sticking in there. Okay. All right. And since I did perform an assessment prior to this, I have checked for placement before inserting this. Okay. All right, now that we've got all that, I'm going to instruct Fred to take a slow, deep breath, and remove the tape, and I'm gonna remove it just in one fell swoop. Here we go. All right, good job, Fred. I'm gonna discard all of that I'm going to document how he tolerated the procedure, um, the amount of fluid that I inserted prior to uh, removing the tube, and all other relevant data. All right, thank you.